Had plants been taught differently, for example, these are rocky and these are icy and this is that, then you wouldn't have this issue. So it's how it was taught more than what the science was. And so, and I, I take some blame for that because I'm an educator and my, my brethren write books that actually presented it that way. So we need a new, if it's a paradigm shift, it's in the education of the public, not in the science of it. So think of Pluto not as the discovery of the ninth planet. Think of it as the discovery of a new kind of object in the solar system. So in that regard, the science has grown in its understanding, not shifted from, from, from the left to the right and up and down and, and, and front and back. It's a new, bigger understanding of the same system of planets. And now let's take a question from the gentleman on my right. Dr. Tyson, as you well know, in 1630s, Galileo was threatened with considerably more than simply a uh, bill in the California House. <laughs> but he was threatened with death or execution simply for ex upsetting the paradigm of the time. Would you like to reflect a bit on that? Sure. The paradigm at the time was that Earth was the center of all motion, that, uh, and, and that person looks that way. So we can't really completely fault the church for dogmatism there. You stand on earth, it kind of looks that way. So, but it greatly resonated with scripture. If you look at Genesis, basically earth is there in the middle, and no, there's no way to, to interpret Genesis any other way if you're looking at the literal meaning of those passages. And everybody who read those passages read it that way, until science showed that the sun is in the middle. Okay, so, so there, you can't completely blame it because it actually looked that way. The problem is, it's not that you have one paradigm and then another. The problem is, if your belief system is, according to you, incapable of error, then it becomes dogma. And so, by the way, you can have scientific dogma. That's what happened in Russia with Lysenko. All right? Lysenko was the guy who said that you can inherit characteristics acquired by your parents, okay? Rather than sort of genetically part of your thread. And so that was so, that resonated so well with sort of Marxist philosophy of the day that that raw scientific understanding of biology became political dogma. And so, and you need to always be flexible to a modification of what you know. Otherwise, you, you, you get in a rut where you can, particularly if you have power of authority to punish people for believing differently, that's, that's a recipe for disaster. So this is different. This, at least there was an open dialogue. People chose up size, and in the end, people are looking for data. The informed folks are looking for data. Others are still <laughs> sort of emotionally wanted one way rather than another. And I don't think you can ever switch that out. I can tell you this. Third graders today, the hate mail is stopped. They were born into the awareness that Pluto was demoted. And so they just say, yeah, they kind of. And the third graders from 2001, they're all now in high school with, with hormonal priorities that prevent them from caring about this problem. <laughs> so, so those who are so entrenched in it, they'll grow old and die, the next generation will, will understand it from scratch. <laughs> Which brings to the question, you know, in the old days we had nine planets. Now we've got the terrestrial, the rocky planets, the gas giants, and the what, the Kuiper Belt objects? I know, it's kind of, it's, it's weak. It's weak. <laughs> we, and, and plus, astronomers are good at finding cool names for things. Yeah. Right, beginning of the universe, Big Bang, right? You got that? We, big Red Star, Red Giant. We're pretty good about naming things. Kuiper Belt objects. <laughs> it's just kind of weak. And I don't know, I, I like them snow cones or something, you know? I don't know. I, I'm, so I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. By well, it. isn't there something official that we're going to do? The IAU say, this is what we're calling our so in flux. The uh, uh, KBOs, Kuiper Belt objects. Is that right? Yeah, KBOs, that's what they are. Or trans-Neptunian objects, <laughs> that works. <laughs> Plus, since trans doesn't even use the word right, they're actually ultra-Neptunian, which means, 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 trans means across, rather than beyond. It's, it's, so it's bad English prefix put into a bad name. <laughs> that's in here too, it's just, I, I, I'm all over it. <laughs> But is that your advice? One of our questions from the audience has to do with you're a science teacher, maybe you're teaching seventh grade. What do you tell students now? 
Well, see, I can tell you that, I'll just tell you to buy the freaking book, because in the last <laughs> chapter, the last chapter, that's why, that's why I write the book, so I don't have to tell you, I can go back home, you know? That's why, let me get the title of the chapter here. Okay, it's Pluto's Judgment Day, that's that. Pluto, the dwarf planet, there it goes, and then, well, hang on, and then, Pluto in the elementary school classroom. A personal recommendation for educators. And there's a comment I, uh, that appeared. It says, a science class, we've got a, a, we've got a whole new, what does that say? Okay. So, no planet left behind. This is, okay, uh, this is a comment. At the time, only the round criterion was, was, was all the buzz. Without the clearing the orbit, that would have brought in another seven objects in the solar system. So this is no planet left behind and lists them all from Mercury all the way out to the exotic round objects found in there. So in there, I'm just saying, don't count planets. That's not an interesting exercise. Pick properties that are common among them and talk about that. You can say things like, because you list all the properties and you have your class, you can do this in third grade. You say, all right, which objects have atmospheres? That would be uh, uh, Mars and Venus and Earth and Jupiter, and, and Saturn, and Uranus, and Neptune. Great, and Titan, one of the moons of Saturn. Talk about those together now. Do they have storms? Is there rain? Is there snow? What's the snow made of? What is, that's a way to slice through the data. How about rings? Which ones have rings? Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Have a ring unit. Which ones are, have preserved craters? Mercury, the moon, um, there you have it. Which ones have volcanoes? Earth, Mars, Io, one of Jupiter's moons, which is stressed by Jupiter's gravity, heats the inside to the point where the rock has become molten, and it bursting forth. The largest volcanoes in the solar system are on the moon of Jupiter. Talk about volcanoes together. And who cares what, whether they're planets or moons? It doesn't matter. You want to look at what's interesting about them to talk about. And that's what I recommend in the last chapter here. And a question from the audience, sir? Oh, okay. You're very polite of you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Tyson, um, as a fourth grade teacher, I do have a few holdouts in my classroom. Uh oh! Uh oh! <laughs> but I am doing my so best. may I accuse you of having failed at your job? Yeah. <laughs> it is true that I have left a few children behind. Right? <laughs> um, but I am doing my best to convince them that you're not a, a bad man. Okay. <laughs> This might be a little off topic, but I just see on the Daily Show recently, and you, you mentioned uh, the well, Daily Show. Show if you're like over fifty. <laughs> show. Um, Half the age of any other like nighttime show. So, uh, but right, it's it's more, if you're if you're under fifty or if you're hip and cool. Right. There you go. Okay. No, well, I was on the show last week. Yeah. yeah so you you mentioned a meteor that has a chance of uh, possibly coming to kill us all. I was wondering if you cared to elaborate. <laughs> I was only going to talk about the killer meter, meter if there was time. I mean, but We've got 15 minutes, so... Oh, okay. Uh, so you got worried about the asteroid that's headed towards Earth? That might hit the Pacific Ocean? Uh, okay, I'll spend a moment on it, shall I? Yes. Okay. 2004. You, you should probably sit down to the front. <laughs> But first, I want to say that I have my deepest respect for school teachers because you guys are in the trenches. Um, I mean, I just show up on TV and then I go home at the end of the day and I don't have to think about it, and you guys are in the trenches. So I want to take my hat off to you. Uh, so, 2004, December, an asteroid was discovered, one of thousands that orbit the asteroid belt. Some subset of those asteroids have orbits that are wayward and cross the orbits of other <coughs> planets. The set of those that crosses Earth's orbit are called near-Earth objects, and we want to sort of catalog them and track them in case one of them will hit us imminently. This asteroid was discovered, and you need a few images of it to watch it move against the background sky, and then you can fit an orbit to it. When that orbit was fit, they found that in the year 2029, April, 